secret documents here, classified here, classified there. What should be classified? What should be top secret? Uh, to what extent? To what extent should information be withheld from the American people? I mean, for example, I'll give you a bunch of examples. Um, I don't know. There's still files on the um, Kennedy assassination. Was it now sixty years ago? That have not been released. Uh, there are all kinds of files. The UFO files that the Air Force has been holding that for, de for, for years and years and maybe decades uh, were not released and it's not clear they're all being released today. Uh, there are all kinds of, we still have in the United States, we still have uh, secret courts, which is a feature of the worst kind of authoritarian governments. And yet we still have secret courts in the United States. Uh, you know, these uh, FISA courts that are supposed to uh, determine whether the NSA can spy on American citizens or not. I think I think part of the part of the original Trump FBI scandal um, in uh, uh, post twenty sixteen related to uh, the use of FISA courts to get warrants to listen in. Should we have FISA courts? Should we have secret courts? Uh, there's all kinds of uh, military documents. I'm sure there are assessments of the of of the war in Afghanistan. Assessments of uh, maybe even going back to the to 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 uh, Vietnam that is still considered classified and secret, and uh, and being withheld from the American public. And then every one of the agencies, every one of our regulatory agencies. Now there is a there is generally a, a, a uh, uh, the ability of uh, uh, citizens to ask for the release of information, and the press. This should be a big part of what the press in a free society does is demand that the government release information and more information and more information. But they generally, there's a general acceptance, both in the legal field and in politics and among the public, that it's okay for the government to have lots of secrets from us. And I'd argue that it's not. That the number of things that actually should be secret should be very, very small. They should relate to uh, certain technologies that might give our enemies an advantage over us if they were disclosed. They should relate suddenly to military strategies that again might give our enemies an advantage over us. And they should relate to anything that has to do with uh, agents in the field and methods of collecting um, uh, information, intelligence that legit methods, not illegit methods, but legit methods of collecting information about our enemies that, again, we don't want to disclose. In other words, the principle here is that other than information that is clearly going to help those who would hurt Americans, that would, that would violate Americans' life, uh, violate Americans' right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, other than information that could really damage our lives damage our ability to live, pursue our happiness. So uh, in the hands of our enemies, all other information should be public. There should be very little that is secret. Now, that doesn't mean there shouldn't be top secret documents at the Pentagon. There certainly should be, again, related to weapons, strategy, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, intelligence uh, uh, methods and, and people. Uh, that involved in collecting information. But other than that, and certainly when it comes to anything historic, anything that does not put anybody in danger today, why aren't all government documents unsealed today from, let's say, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago? Weapons are not the same. Strategies are not the same. Our enemies are not the same. Spies in the field, there might be a few, but mostly they're different. Techniques, probably changed. The government is our agent. It's not our boss. The government serves us. The government should not withhold secrets from us unless it is absolutely necessary in the protection of our rights. 
But that is the only standard that should be applied. Now, the things that are secret should be kept secret. <laughs> the things that do put the lives and property of Americans at risk should be kept secret. Uh, and, you know, if top secret information is mishandled, uh, that is a bad thing because it puts our strategy, our people uh, at risk. It puts our ability to wage war against our enemies at risk. And to the extent that anybody, Trump or anybody else, misuses uh, classified information, you know, they should suffer the consequences of it. And, and it's funny because Trump, when he was president, had no regard for actual classified information, for information regarding military secrets. I mean, in a number of occasions, he published secret uh, satellite photos and other things that gave our enemies uh, real information about our capabilities and gave them indications on ways in which they could, by knowing our capabilities, indications on which they could hide things from us. So they reduced the capacity of the US military to actually protect us. Uh, Trump was known for uh, keeping uh, confidential information, uh, documents. He, he liked photographs and graphs, and he would keep them, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't release them. And, and uh, they used to do what they used to do in order to prevent him from doing that is in briefings, they used to um, present him with information in, in very big, like poster size graphs and photographs. Uh, which were very difficult to keep, and he couldn't just put on his desk and leave. Um, and so it, it, it's funny how the intelligence services were constantly trying to figure out how to prevent Trump from doing stupid things. I mean, I think that's true of most of his staff. I think the, the more rational, more adult, more competent people in Trump's staff were constantly trying to think of ways without getting into confrontation with him to prevent him from doing really, really stupid, dumb things. And uh, I think the stuff, the books, the, the articles, the things that have been written about Trump by his own staff members who left, by people who are solidly conservative and solidly Republicans and solidly on that part, uh, people who are respected within the intelligence community or the military community and so on. I think just the, the, the books that they have published, the articles they have published, the things that they have told us about how Trump ran the White House and how he ran the presidency is enough, enough, uh, I think, to disqualify him from office. Uh, I think just John Bolton's book is enough to disqualify him from office. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's truly, um, I mean, the guy's a moron and he's not qualified to be president of the United States. He really isn't. You know, put aside the policies just as a human being, as a personality, as a, as a, as a, every piece of information we learn about what was going on in the White House suggests this guy is not qualified, right? And, uh, you know, and, and, and you don't even need the background, right? You could see it up front. You could see it, um, you could see it in, uh, in the way he, uh, the way he treated our own intelligence agencies and the way he treated his own people and the way he treated foreign leaders, that this guy is not qualified. Not qualified. Uh, and whether he's better or not better, he's not qualified. We have to be honest about that. Then you can argue about who's better and who's not. But first, get rid of the people who are, you know. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? We got a couple of... of, of Super chats. Let me. I'll do these two, and then we'll we'll go to the next topic. Um, friend Harper. So you know, bottom line, just bottom line on the on the state secrets should be very few. Um, they should be related to national security only, and only to national security as it pertains to now and the future. It should never be about whether it makes the government look good or bad. It should never be about um, anything to do. With, with any kind of information other than information that, again, puts the individual rights of American citizens at risk. Everything else should be public and should be easy to get to. And indeed, a, a healthy press, a healthy press, that's their focus, is to uncover and to ask questions 
and to, 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 to go after, you know, the people in power and to make sure that we have all the information that they're not keeping secrets from us and, you know, that they're not being corrupt. So everything should be above board. Everything should be out in the open. There should be full disclosure and full transparency. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.